And after showing you two people, what I will say again is, how do you come to have awareness and then you begin to know the what of what you are into? That's the question I will answer. And then we close. Let's read Nehemiah. A few incidents of the reactions of people that know the word, that put premium, what they were given Nehemiah chapter 6. We are reading from verse 1. Now it came to pass when Sambalad and Tobiah and Geshem the Arabian and the rest of our enemies had but I had built the wall and but there was no bridge left therein though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates. The Sambalat and Geshem sent unto me saying come let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono but they thought to do me mischief Listen to me. He knew the 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 the, the had a, a bad intention to do him mischief, but that was not just the only thing that made him to respond. The thing that made him to respond was that look, what I'm doing is so great and so invaluable to me. I see it in the right perspective, and, and I cannot afford to leave it and come and. Uh, and come and begin to have discussion with you. On what note? Should, on why should I come and then waste that time? I'm having discussion with you. And then leave this thing that I'm doing. And then he replied. Verse uh, 3. And I sent messengers unto them. Say I am doing a great work. Praise the Lord. Amen. Say it after me. I am doing a great work. There you are. I am doing a great work. I have known this thing over the years. And that was the reason some of the times, listen to me. Listen to me attentively. And now the fellowship had begun at Ahera. And then we were not resident. We needed to be visiting. We needed to be visiting from weekend to weekend. Those of us that we are in full-time employment, I was in full-time employment. I was in full-time employment. But then because of my nature, that is what nature? Working for the employer until the employer begins to love you. Now it is, that is my testimony at Panelectric, at Dockyard. It wasn't my testimony before I became born again. My testimony before I, I became born again was, who are you? Manager. If they go and find Mr. Kayo Dena, who was our assistant factory manager at Panelectric, who was living at Munchi, if he's still alive. If they go and find him now, and ask him, what can you say concerning that person, they called Aloysius, he will tell you, that person originally was a very terrible, stubborn individual that didn't bother about anybody. And that was me, who you be manager. The only thing you can do to me is to terminate employment. Now you only be the employer in Lagos. That was the mindset I had. Now you only be employer in this world. When you terminate the employment, I'll find another one. Even though I have, no, I have not assurance of finding another one. That was my attitude. And Mr. Kaede was now set to terminate the employment and he was looking for the because he must have a, he must have something. So one day we were on night duty and then because he was looking for something so he came from Mushi to Dockyard at 2 a.m. The night duty started by 10 and was closing around 6. And nobody knew that he came. And then he came, sneaked into the office, 
in his office and into the workshop and looked around. And then tomorrow morning, he reported to the general manager that he saw me dozing. And then the general manager called me into his office. And behold, Mr. Kaido was sitting. He was sitting. And he said, this is the report was, that was gotten about you yesterday. I said, excuse me. Excuse me, Mr. Glenn. He said, yes. I said, I want to ask a question. That is the person that is preaching to you. Who are you to intimidate me with employment? Then I asked a question. I said, is it possible in this world that somebody began work at 9 in the night, not in the day, in the night, from 9, uh, uh, 9 p.m. through to 7 or 6, uh, 6 a.m. in the morning and didn't do like this at any time? <laughs> did, you hear, did you see what I said? That was the question I put before the British man and Mr. Kyle. <laughs> so you can know the kind of mind I had. And then Mr. Uh, Mr. Glenn said, Mr. Kyle, the answer. was exactly what happened and so he was looking he didn't say a word and mr glenn said go away you can go away <laughs> and that was the end and then he became enraged until the lord arrested me at Ezago street by the roadside and when he saw the transformation that took place. I am going somewhere. I'm wanting to tell you how I take this thing from the one. When he saw the transformation, how I took even Christianity from the one. When he saw the transformation, he called me to his office. And I came in, he said, Aloysius, now I know. Even though I am not born again, but I have seen being born again inside you. And from that moment, and he told me further, I have been looking for an opportunity to terminate your employment. And from that day, we became so friendly that there will be a crusade going on. And I will come to ask for seven days leave. And he will say, go. <laughs> seven days. And the they will say, go. So, now return to Ahira something. Because that was what I was going to say about how we follow this thing. And many people... And many people, I hope that, I hope that they are still holding, holding to it that way. That's why I said, it is not, I do not know. They have to answer. I am answering for myself. Those people that have been there over the period, they have to answer for themselves. To, uh, to say whether they are having this, uh, they, are, they are holding this ministry, they understand it the way they understood it in times past. Because my own, there has not been any depreciation. That's what I am telling you. And now, because of that, I needed to get the favor of uh, my employers. Because I was involved in something that will, that will take me out from time to time from the place of work. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? So, when I was in Leander, the man I worked on that was a proud arrogant British young man but when he saw when he saw the difference between Aloysius and this Asetam Quantist of Oil and this Asetam Quantist of Oil, two of them now that's it when these two people after doing something he will not use their valuation to pay he will give it, bring it to my table to vet it because he didn't trust them and there also, 
any time I wanted to go to Easter retreat by Pastor Kumui in Lagos or at Elori. And it fell within the time, some of the Easter retreat fell within the time of work whatsoever. I come to him, Mr. Wise, I have uh, a retreat to attend. You know the question you ask, Aloysius, is there any very important thing that is on your desk that needs to be done? And I say, no. Bye bye. That's all. Bye bye. At DTV, the same thing. I need to go to Ahera and I need to be there on a Saturday evening through to Sunday and then begin to return on Monday morning. And you know that that Monday morning, you will not go to work or you will go you will not go to work now if you are coming from the east are you hearing me and that saturday even friday sometimes it's on friday and then i come to the boss and said that you know who i am we have a fellowship and i'm going to address it and please i need to leave today at at 12 because saturday and sunday weekend we have a retreat Bye bye. Immediately it's twelve. I set off from 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 DTV there. Where is it? Called the Trinity area. And and drive before it is seven eight. I'm at Ahera. One fifty kilometers an hour. Minimum one forty. But please don't go to ride like that today. Don't say, hey, daddy was riding 150 kilometers an hour. Daddy was riding 140 kilometers an hour. Who would prevent me from riding 150 kilometers an hour? Don't go and kill yourself. Because we are not equal in expertise. I've been driving since even sometime before you were born. Since 1978, non-stop. Some of you, by 1978, they have not born you. Or maybe you were a toddler dead. And then, listen to me. If I see Satan on the road, I'll kill him. <laughs> listen. This last time we traveled at Enugu, somebody was bringing me to lodges. And then we will have all finished. I will have died just one week ago. Certain because if that head-on collision happened, the boss, you know how they drive, he was on 140. And our brother, the person driving was 120, 130, 140. And then he, he had known, he had known that the people are now using one lane. Enugu, Portacot Expressway. Enugu end was fine. And then later on in the middle, the thing became bad and the people were losing one lane. And he had known it. And we had dodged the people for not less than 10 kilometers. But I don't know what made him to be absent-minded. And I began to now go on the side-by-side side with another person. And at a bend, and behold, as if that, that building there, that one was coming. And he didn't see it. From the back, I shouted, can't you see it? And then, push him, break. And then God helped us. He was able to now come out. And then, jump. and that man, fiam! when we reached school, I said, Your chastisement is that you don't drive me again. Simple. So, you want us to die? That and I began to drive myself. So if I'm going to village from here, and I'm going to go drive myself. Because I'm confident. I told him, and that is the truth, if I'm driving on this road, any road, two miles ahead, I know what's happening there. Two miles behind, I know what's happening there. You know, people who are driving, and they're looking up and down, looking to the market people until they go and kill themselves so don't ride 150 kilometers because in the days when i was doing it look 
it was with perfect caution not just believing God praying I have many many things to tell you some brethren in those days from upper room a man had bought a new car and he was carrying carrying they went for a wedding Christian wedding no? scripture union brother was wedding in Enugu and they went from upper room he was time to go to the wedding and he was carrying him, himself and another brother and a sister and as we are coming they were singing people who, were, who went who went on the wedding they were joyful and the next moment the and he lost his life the other brother broke his bones the owner of the vehicle lost his life that was 975 yeah christian you can lose your life for me that singing that you are singing did it intoxicate you so that you did not see the road again so now these are by stories eh? but the main thing is that because of the word of the ministry and the need to attend to it i needed to live my life in such a way that these people will not prevent me as i asked permission that is the point are you hearing me so because of the word of the ministry and as you see me now nothing is above this ministry as far as i'm concerned money i don't need it house i don't need it doesn't influence me doesn't make any meaning to me car big car i don't know anything about big car what i know is that the car is taking you to where you are going what means something to me is this ministry until i get people who will have that kind of mind then we will still be crawling and years are going on those that were 50 are now going to 60. those of us that we are 60 are now going to 70. and now we are yet crawling because of the fact that people cannot see what they should see but see nehemiah i want to show you what made phinehas to do what he did numbers 25 quickly so that, reading from verse 1 and israel abode in shitting and the people began to commit wardom with the daughters of moab you hear that they began to go into the daughters of moab and they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. Even those women lured them. And they went into the sacrifices of their gods. And the people did eat and bow down to their gods. Because of the women that has influ had influenced them. And Israel joined himself unto Balpoa. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people. And hang them up before the Lord against the sun. That the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay ye every one his men that were joined unto Baal Listen to me. That was a situation. Gave a commandment. Slay every person that was involved in that wardom because of women. And then they lured you because of the flesh of women of the Moabites. And then they brought you to their sacrifices and then you began to bow down to their idol gods. Say, so kill all of them. And then, while that, that offense was being, was uh, paining God, and he was dishing out this chastisement, behold, somebody had the boldness to go and take one of these girls. Are you hearing me? And then brought the person into the camp of Israel and entered his tent with the girl. And Phineas has said, What? Even the one that the people have gotten into have created so much trouble for us. And you don't. So Israel and the, and the relationship between Israel and God does not mean anything to you. You see that that relationship has been soured. Because of what the people do, did, a number of people did, and God had commanded that their heads should be taken, they should be hanged. 
And then you have the gods to increase the trouble of Israel. And he took a javelin. You know what a javelin is? And then went after and reached the tent. Two eye. And took it away in their stomachs. And the two died. What made him to go that extreme? Was because of the value he placed on the relationship of Israel and God. That has now been soured. And somebody went to sour it more. He went to that extreme. And even God cleared him. That you have removed my anger, my father's anger. So, what I will draw in. When people see, they will, it will cost them. And when it costs them something, it will not mean anything. Did you see how somebody rejected employment, real employment? I won't mention the of, of official because it's too personal. Official 